Is he playing it without a pick? What? This episode of Dean Attempts to Learn is brought to you by Sheet Happens, where you can purchase guitar and bass tablature books edited and approved by the musicians themselves. If you're a fan of learning awesome music, head over to their website at sheethappenspublishing.com and use code word DEAN at checkout for 15% off. That's code word DEAN for 15% off. Welcome back to another episode of uh, something on my channel. So there's plenty of Archspire covers on YouTube here. I'm going to go through some and uh, and just show you, I don't know, what I think of them. I am very honored and uh, very stoked that anybody would consider doing a cover. I'm just going to go right into it. I'm going to just call out everybody's name and make sure everybody gets the credit they deserve. I know how hard it is just to write it. So to learn it, uh, probably be very difficult as well, uh, if not equally difficult. So first off, we're going to start with our, our dude, 56,000... Sorry, 560,000, 560,000. It's my dude. He covered a song called Involuntary Doppelganger that's off of the album Relentless Mutation. Let's take a listen. Yeah, he seems like he has a really good... Uh, control over his picking and uh, and over his pinch harmonics specifically. This definitely sounds like an awesome cover. I don't, maybe I should have started with one that wasn't so uh, crazy perfect. A uh, weird thing in the studio is when we recorded that part. So we actually do like a, two different pinch harmonics. It's not always the easiest thing to capture live, but hey, it's an uh, interesting little detail. I'm going to skip ahead to a few other riffs in here. It sounds pretty great. I, I imagine that because he's playing a seven string, he'll probably play Toby's parts for the most part. But uh, I think he's already playing some of my parts anyway. Yeah, that's Toby's part. That's also Toby's part. But he'll probably play my solo, so we'll see. Oh, shit. Uh, the thing about the run coming up is uh, it's really hard. And I fuck it up every time. His sounded better than mine. I haven't played that song for a few weeks. A lot of the times I'll accidentally play that major third rather than a minor third, and it makes it sound pretty weak. One thing that uh, he's doing, uh, sorry, he's doing some tremolo with his bar, uh, but I actually do it a little bit differently. So I'll do a little bit of classical vibrato, side to side vibrato. I really like the sound of that. Um, it's been a while since I started adding it to my playing, but since I did, yeah, I feel like it really gives it a unique sound. Uh, it also helps me on the high strings when I don't want to do a full vibrato. I want to actually just do some sort of slight modulation. It helps me out. Let's check the clean part. Oh, that riff is so hard. Toby's part. He's wearing one of the shirts that we got printed in our uh, during our Japanese tour with Obscura. It's a very, very fun tour. I would love to go back there. I 
It's all Toby's parts. This run is impossibly hard. This guy's put me in a shame. Excellent job. Um, all right, up next we have... Uh, well, I said I was going to say everybody's names. Uh, this guy's YouTube name is uh, Z Moron. <laughs> Sorry. He's doing a song called Dark Horizontal. This is the, in my opinion, the hardest song that we've ever written. Hardest is and most difficult to play live. What I notice right away is his picking style is very interesting. And one thing that's strange is he definitely learned this by ear because it's not completely perfectly right, but it has a really interesting sound to it. He did some harmonies there, which I've never heard before. Ooh, I like this part. It sounds really creepy. Uh, in actual fact, this part is... I actually wanted it to sound like a pizzicato violin when I wrote it. Um, I don't know if it came across like that, but it's two strings, palm muted and picked at the same time. He's got the downstroke here going on. It's great. Let's see if he does my solo. Yep. Oh. It's different. It's definitely different, but it sounded cool. What's the solo? Whoa. He's playing arpeggiated versions of things. It's cool. I'm not sure how he's getting clean picking with his right hand when he's picking like that. It's interesting looking. It's very cool. Let me skip ahead a little bit. Oh, he's got chorus, like a creepy chorus on his, uh, on his, uh, clean. It's very sugar like it sounds cool. I love the chords in that part. I actually wrote it during a lesson with one of my students. Spooky. Oh man, sounds really cool. Oh, I'd like to hang out with this guy and show him a couple of easier ways to play these riffs, because he could definitely play them. It's just a little bit different than how I would than how I would sort of like put put the shape on the guitar. Oh, a weird thing about this too is there's a clock ticking in the background, and this is just like a. Um, a sound effect that I found online. I asked our producer, Dave Otero, I was like, yeah, so maybe we could just like find a better one. And I just put it in here as a placeholder. And he's like, no, that's fine. I'm like, oh, uh, shouldn't it be better? He's like, no, it's fine. it sounds fine. So I'm like, okay, so I'll just use the one that I found. <laughs> this sounds fine. Same thing with the VST. There's actually a bit of a synth in there. And the synth is also just a free VST that I have. And I sent it to him. He's like, yeah, it sounds great. I'm like, aren't you going to do a better one? He's like, no, yours sounds good. Okay kind of puts a lot of pressure on me. He's like, I hope it sounds good enough. That being said, Dave does a great job. <clears throat> oh boy. That's an interesting way to play it. Fuck that solo so hard. This is my favorite part of the song. Oh, cool. Wow. Oh boy. Close, but really crazy. Oh boy, guy's killing it. He's playing some different shapes. 
Yeah, this is the cursed part. Amazing job, my dude. All right. Up next, we have uh, our buddies in Pangea. Um, and, oh. oh, they have a little intro thing. That's nice. They're doing the riffs. Okay. Oh, my God. Whoa, he fucking biffed it with his skateboard, dude. Six string, eh? so hard. Trying to get it clean, it took me so long. That's a Toby riff. One thing I think about this this sweep. Oh, they just do the uh, just the first part. Oh, great! It sounds great, guys. Um, the cool thing about that is like I imagine uh, toothpaste being squeezed out of a uh, tube of toothpaste to get that sweep in there. It has to like every note should flow like smoothly and one after another. Like, like it's just I don't know. I visualize it when I'm playing alive. Um, this one came out oh in January of this year. Yeah, so they must have the tab because they're playing it pretty correctly. Awesome job, my dudes, Pangea. Up next, we have uh, another one of Involuntary Doppelganger by my dude, Richard Mauricio. Let's check it out. First off, you gotta love the uh, bed in the frame. Um, it's funny because I see so many guitar players, those, and I, I did that too. I mean, I practiced in my bedroom all the time. And uh, having the bed in the frame is like the classic. I play my guitar next to my bed where I sleep. It's no, uh, I'm not hating on you, dude. It's just, uh, yeah, same. What guitar is that? Is that a, that's an eight? Apparently I can't count. It looks like an eight string neck, but I've never seen that one. It's got sh shark tooth inlays, dude. It's an Ibanez, I think. Or maybe it's a, I don't know what the hell. It looks... Almost Ivan is like, but it's probably an Agile. I mean, he's killing it. Awesome left hand control. Good luck to anybody that attempts that part. Richard, you're killing it, buddy. Up next, we have a cover of Lucid Collective Sound Emulation by my dude Valentine. 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 Valen, uh, well, let's just call him uh, my dude. Because I really do appreciate all these people covering our music. It's pretty crazy to watch people do that. Is that a tiger print? What is going on in this video? The edges of the video are like, it's got a strange border on it. Nice right hand, alternate picking dude, killing it. Oh boy, that riff is hard. If you watch his right hand, you get a lot of oh, two-way pick slanting. Now he's inside picking it, which I don't. Um, he inside picks it, I outside pick it, eh, it's the same thing. Uh, well, it's not, it's opposite, but uh, it's the same, you know, nobody's doing it right. We're both doing it just different ways. <laughs> Let's see if I can play along with you. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, he's, he's doing it really well. Uh, everybody so far is doing really well. What the hell? This is the part that I get asked about the most. I appreciate this guy because he's uh, he's got his guitar mixed really loudly. I appreciate it. It's definitely the real audio. I only say that because I can hear kind of like the odd misfret or, or whatever it is. But he's got the speed to do it. Just needs to clear up a couple things. Let's see what the tapping thing sounds like. Oh, one finger, dude. Oh, sick. Whoa. That's Toby's solo. <clears throat> Killing it, dude. All right, up next we have, uh, man, everybody's name is very hard to pronounce. What the hell's going on? He, uh, this this Gojira shirt-wearing gentleman did a uh, cover of a song called Fathom at Infinite Depth. So let's check it out. On a Schecter 7 string. Actually, we were just going over the, uh, the edits for the last book that came out, the Lucid Collective guitar tab book and uh, it was interesting to go back to this song and all the other ones that I haven't played for years <clears throat> and just go over all the stems and make sure everything was right it was interesting <clears throat> guys timing is good even just memorizing this takes a while yeah, he's doing a great job oh he's taking a break during the clean part I know that feeling, but you don't have a foot pedal or anything at home. What are you going to do? Again, you can hear his guitar really well over the mix. Killer job, dude. Up next, we have uh, Emiliano Rodrigo Calandra. And he's going to do the song Remote Tumor Seeker from our uh, most recent album. Oh my god, he's playing it differently, but it looks just as hard, if not harder. This dude, and you, you'll notice here, he's playing through Winamp. Everybody remember Winamp? It was like an MP3 player or something? Dude, Winamp. Fuck. Yeah, he's playing it differently than me, but it sounds good. <clears throat> he's playing on what looks to be a headless, it might be a Strandberg? It looks like a Strandberg, but at the same time not. Uh, can't tell. Custom headless guitar. Oh boy, that part is so difficult. It's difficult the way that I wrote it, let alone a different way. Oh, he's got a cool way to play that main riff. It's actually a little bit easier than that. Um, it's all minor thirds, um, big minor third kind of dyads with the octaves on the top. It sounds sick, dude. Toby Solo. If you guys want to know the, the way that I wrote that main riff, I have a video on my channel. I'll link it. Um, actually, I'll put it up in the uh, corner, one of the corners, whichever corner it is. Um, I'll put it up there. It uh, shows you how to play it for real. Uh, this guy's doing like a different version of it, which sounds equally as cool, but might be a bit more difficult than the one that I wrote. Toby solo again. Solo coming up is the hardest one that I've written ever. It's oh, he's playing this one. Interesting. Oh, his diminished ones are different. He was doing like a movement down with the diminished uh, shapes, uh, but the way that I wrote it. Lots
Lots of left-hand hammer on from nowhere and stuff like that. Killer job, dude. Emiliano, thank you for the support. Up next, we have uh, Jaden. Jaden Dearnley. So he's doing uh, the entire song, the entire Mimic Wall song. He has two Ormsby-looking guitars. We're going to see what's up. August 2019 should be after the Guitar Tab book is released, so... Killing it, dude. Really good job. Oh yeah, that riff is tough. It's a big string skipping kind of riff. This is the hardest one on the song for me anyway. It's playing alright. He must have the official tab. Dude, great job. Um, so that riff I actually pick. get back into shape anyway i picked that one uh if you want some extra challenge try picking it i'm gonna skip forward and see what he does with the clean section oh yeah that polychord part hey he's playing it like me man or he's he's playing a different um different octave than i'm oh there you go there's my part Yeah, so when, uh, when I'm playing that part, and if you pick up the official book, you'll see, but I'll show you here. Or I'm doing one melody line that moves upwards and then the bass line that stays the same. I'm always afraid of fucking this part up live because I play by myself for a second. And then I do this phaser one. Understandable if you don't do it, and you gotta have the right effects. Luckily for me, I have the um, the phaser automated on my XFX. Sick job, Jaden. Good job, bud. All right, got two more. Up next, we got Steph. Let's check it out. His name looks very familiar. I feel like I know this dude. I like it. He's taking his time getting in. There's no rush, you know what I'm saying? You can hear his guitar really well too. He's playing an RG, I don't know which, RG A8? RG A8, probably. Lots of down picking for the intro, great job. Ah, this is a variation. Variation that one of my students actually showed me one time. He's like, why don't you play it like this? All in one string. I'm like, ah, yeah, because uh, I don't want to. Like, I just didn't know that you could do that. Let's check out my solo. Oh, swoops sound good. Tapping stuff is pretty close. That sounds pretty close, dude. He looks like a mad scientist or something. Oh yeah. That part's tough. Getting those string skips uh, pick notes are tough. on quite a bit. See how many fingers he uses to do the tapping part. Pinch harmonics sound good, dude. The end of the song makes your hand real tired. By the time you get to the end, you're like, oh. 
Why did I write it like this? Multi-finger tapping, that's what it's, that's that's how you do it, dude. Nice, right, killing it. Good job, Steph. Thank you for the support, my friend. All right, we got one more. This one could be really cool because I uh, I noticed he's playing in uh, some sort of couch with tons of pillows. So, last one, February uh, 29, or 2018. So this is gonna be all by ear or by a tab online of varying quality. A little bit of After Effects action. Is he playing it without a pick? What? Wow. He wins. Video's over. He wins. That's insane. Uh, I've never seen anybody play death metal without a pick. Uh, not on purpose, anyway. I mean, by mistake, if you drop one, but he's doing pinch harmonics without a pick. That's, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, I'll link all the videos in the description, and uh, thanks for watching. So uh, you can grab both of the books that I talked about in this video over at shehappenspublishing.com. Use my code Redeen for 15% off at checkout. And uh, I guess you won't need one of these because if this guy could do it without a pick, then, you know. See you next time.